name is Vince. I'm one of our Rock Church Anywhere pastors. And I'm excited you're joining us today for service because we're kicking off a new series called Heart for the House. Pastor Miles is going to be sharing with us a vision and the opportunity to step out in faith and invest in the divine potential of God's home. So join us after the service, uh, after worship and the message, and we'll have a quick conversation. God bless. I started coming to Rock Church. I, I started the online services in March 2020 when everyone else's doors were closing. I needed a church that could do it online. And I got involved through the R groups. So my first impression of the church was that it was super, super crowded. I would just get lost in the crowd. I wouldn't really talk to anyone. I would just slip in and then slip out. And that all changed when I joined the hospitality team in February of 2021. I'd encourage someone to volunteer at Rock Church because that's how you're gonna grow. After volunteering with Choice for Joy and also after volunteering with the mask repair, that's when I saw our outreach efforts and how we were repairing however many hundred thousand masks or providing groceries and praying over how many thousand people. That really changed how I understood giving and what, when you, when you give to God, where is it gonna go? It's, it's gonna go back to the community. And now it's something that's automatic for me. So I just know every month, every two weeks, however often, um, I'm, I'm contributing back to the kingdom. I'm committed to Rock Church because I've, I've seen God move through the people in this church. He has moved in my life, specifically through the worship nights, the different services and the different ministries. Um, I, I just see so much of God's power in the community here. To, to have a heart for, for anything, right, is to have a passion behind it. It could be through tithing, it could be through some social cause, right? But when you have a heart for the house, specifically God's house, it's your spiritual, emotional, social, it's your financial investment. You want to do everything that you can because you have such a passion for it to further whatever ministry God is calling you to. Hey, can I have all y'all stand up? Welcome, welcome. My name is Miles. Welcome to the Rock Church. We are starting a new series today, Say Heart for the House. And we want to welcome all our campuses, especially Chula Vista, Pastor Mario. Let's give Chula Vista a big hand. God bless y'all. What's up? Uh, do we have any Padre fans in the house? Come on now. Come on now. Now let's be honest. How many y'all? How many y'all went to bed before the end of the game? <laughs> I, I was one of those people. <laughs> Saturday night is my early bed night, and I couldn't stay up. But uh, I woke up to uh, five three. That was awesome. So uh, those guys are great. We're gonna get the World Series here, right in San Diego. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. We have we have a men's conference this Saturday. I want to encourage y'all, all you guys. If you're a guy, raise your hand. If you're a guy, raise your hand. Come on now. <clears throat> we will be here Saturday morning. Please sign up. We're going to have a great time. We're going to talk about some men's stuff and get, get really uh, personal. Get in your business. Amen? Amen? Amen. And if anybody is traveling tomorrow, it's a random thing. If you're going on the airport, Terminal 2, I'm going to be doing a book signing in Terminal 2 tomorrow. So stop by the books, books, bookstore there. <laughs> right at Terminal 2 somewhere. I'll be there somewhere. I don't know. 10 o'clock in the morning. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's pray. Let's get on our knees today. Let's get on our knees today. Let's get on our knees. Even though this is the beginning of the first service, we've already had an amazing amazing morning and I'm excited about this series and I, I'm going to ask you to come every week to the series. Um, uh, and I do that, you know, every week whether you're here or not to be engaged in it. But uh, um, as we close out this year and go into hopefully next year, our non-COVID year, COVID has towed us up from the flow up. But it's, always, but, it's been, but it's been a good thing and God has showed us a lot of things. And so let's, let's go into next year, a new person. Hopefully, from COVID, you've learned some things that are going to make you more like Jesus. Can I get amen? amen? Whenever anything bad happens to you that you think is bad, don't ask why. Ask what do I need to learn. Don't say, God, why are you doing this to me? Say, what do you want me to learn? Because it's going to happen. And, and it's just is. So um, we've done the same thing. So, Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Lord, I pray you encourage us today. I pray you speak to us and uh, get in our business and really challenge us in our faith 
uh, in our relationship with you, our relationship with our family, with our church, with our community. And we pray for our world. Uh, there's so much change happening in our world. So many negative things. So much division. So much immorality and violence. And the only hope is the gospel. Amen. The only hope is the gospel. And we are the carriers of the gospel. So I pray that we can do our part to share and live and display and model the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, turn to someone and say, you need the gospel. <laughs> Please turn to 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 7, 2 Samuel, Old Testament chapter 7, 2 Samuel chapter 7. There was a couple in marriage counseling and going through the counseling and the counselor, you know, she questioned the wife, then she questioned the man. And I'm not going to be sexist in this, but a lot of times it's the man who's the problem. <laughs> Can I get amen, ladies? Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. <laughs> And, I, and I, I will say in all seriousness, it, 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 a lot of times the man is the key to fixing the problem <laughs> and, and to be a, a, a servant of the family, et cetera. But anyway, in this particular story, she goes to the man and she says, um, it seems like you're not giving your wife the attention she needs. Seems like you're not giving your kids the attention they need. You're not going to their games. You're not going to your daughter's recital. Seems like you're not spending money and investing in the well-being of your family. You're spending all the extra money, family money, on your toys, your fishing gear, your tools, your truck. It seems like you're spending a lot of your free time with your guy friends and not your family. And then she said, it seems like you're not bought into the family. You don't have a heart for your house. I want to ask you, do you have a heart for your house. And not only your family house, but your church house. This is a house. I wanna, I wanna, when I talk a house in this series, I'm talking about several things. You can put up on the screen house. A heart is passion, courage, motivation. The Bible says where your treasure is is where your heart is. You will put your energy and your time and your talent and your treasure where you have passion. Matter of fact, you could tell what's important to people by looking at their checkbook, looking at their calendar. It's what you do with your time, your talent, your treasure shows where your heart is. Your house, as we're going to talk about house, is your physical dwelling, which is your building. That is true. That is your house. Your house is your family or your descendants and God's people. In this series, we're going to talk about do you have a heart, a passion, a courage, motivation for God's house? This family, do you view these people in this room and all our church, in, in Rock Church, but all around the world, but specifically Rock Church, as your spiritual family? They're not just people who sit next to you. They're people who are connected to you by the, via the Holy Spirit. If you've ever been traveling and you meet somebody, I would hope when you meet people when you travel or people you don't know who say they're a believer, that there is some kind of kinship because the Holy Spirit that's in them is in the Holy Spirit that's in you. Can I get an amen? amen? And that Holy Spirit is speaking to them from the same book about the same God, about living the same life as he is you. And if the house of God is going to be and fulfill its divine potential, God has given us, the Rock Church and every church around the world, and the church globally, divine supernatural potential. 
And the only way that potential is realized is when the people of the family, of the house, put their heart into the house. So over these next six weeks, we're going to be talking about from the book, of, from, all, from the Old Testament, about the life of David, King David, and his heart for his house, and learn different lessons about what we can do and how we can be, express a heart for the house better. So we're going to talk about, we're going to celebrate what God has done in this house throughout this series. Yesterday, a thousand volunteers packed up 270,000 meal kits for Pakistan. Come on, let me get a hand. Amen. That was amazing. It was amazing. And this church has done so much, $4 million or so a year of volunteer service. We add up all the, uh, the value of what you do in the community. And you do amazing things. So we're going to celebrate those things and say to you, thank you. Thank you for your giving of your time. Thank you for giving of your resources. But then we're going to look forward to next year. Because as I was praying a few minutes ago, our world is falling apart. I was just hearing about some teenagers who shot people. Uh, I can't remember. It was in Texas. My wife was telling me this morning, did you hear about this shooting? You hear about this shooting? The world is falling apart. And the only hope is the gospel. I'm telling you, I'm going to say it again. We had a very volatile election a couple years ago, whenever that was, and people were so divided on politics, divided on social issues. The only hope is the gospel. I'm telling you. And unless we understand that, we can't, look at, we can't look at coming to church as one thing we do. Now, it obviously is part of a lot of things you do in your life, but we can't equate your politics or your social justice or your finances or business or all those things with the power of the gospel. Because people are going to believe all these different ideological beliefs but still go to hell if they don't have the gospel. I, I do a, a lot with NFL. And we, I, I'm part of a group. That, um, that has been ministering to professional athletes ever since I played. And a lot of these guys and women have these foundations to do football camps or baseball camps or whatever it is, and fabulous. But if they don't share the gospel, they're going to learn how to play football and go to hell. They're going to learn how to play baseball and go to hell. Some of y'all are going to do personal development and go to hell. We need to know the gospel is the foundation of what's going to save people's lives. And we are the carrier of the gospel. And so God is saying, I did my part, and I'm I want to continue to do my part, but now I need you to do your part. And so in this series called Heart for the House, we're going to challenge you to say, Lord, is my heart for this house and what God has called this house to be? And again, the house is not only the building as much the family and what the mission that God has given us as a church family. Can I get amen? So what I'm going to be talking about is King David. Everyone say, David. In this particular message today, we're going to look at the foundation of what heart for the house means and God is going to tell us. He is going to tell us. Now, David was a little boy when he was uh, anointed as king. He killed Goliath. Um, Goliath was a giant, nine feet, nine inches tall. And then David went through a lot of battles with the King Saul. King Saul was actually anointed the king, I mean, uh, elected the king, but David was the anointed king. And as David rose to power, King Saul came against him, and we'll learn more about their battles as the weeks go by in this series. But in this particular passage... David is already king over all Israel, and he built himself an amazing house, a palace made of cedar wood. It was an incredible house. And he says to himself, God's ark, the ark of the covenant, if you've seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, Raiders of the Lost Ark was about the ark of the covenant. And in the ark was the Ten Commandments. And above the ark was the presence of God. And the Raiders of the Lost Ark, they believe if you had the ark, you had the presence of God and you can kill any, win any war in the world. So if you had, think about it, this is amazing. You might not have realized this. The Raiders of the Lost Ark was about the Bible. It was about the power of God. Because if you got the ark, you can win any war. So that's why they were trying to get it. Because the power, the presence of God was above the ark. So David, David said, I got to bring the ark back to the city of David and build a house for the ark. And in this passage, he's going to go to a prophet and say, I have a great house. I got to build God a house. And the, and the prophet's going to tell him, do what's all in your heart. But then God is going to come to the prophet and say, no, 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 no. He ain't going to build me a house. I'm going to build him a house. <laughs> now, here's what you need to know. When you tell God, God, I want to bless you, oh, snap. 
Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm telling you. A lot of times, a lot of times we think, God, I gotta ask, I gotta keep asking. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Ooh, watch this. If you say to God, God, my heart is for you. I want to be a blessing to you. You watch what God, how he blesses you. Why? Because he's going to honor those who honor him. And now when you say, God, I want to honor you with my life, my talent, my treasure, God's going to say, now I can trust you with more because you're not going to hoard it. So what David's going to say is, I want to build a house for God, and we're going to see what God is going to say to David. And what's the point? The point is that as we go through this series, to have a heart for the house, that we begin to understand what does it mean to be part of a church family? What does it mean to be invested in the divine, eternal, supernatural potential of his house, of his family, of his church, which is you and me? Because that world out there is dying. And he's looking at us going, come on, let's go. I want to help people. I want to love on people. I want to build my kingdom because there is going to come a day when the whole earth, every knee will bow. Watch this. This knee and that knee. It ain't, ain't going to be none of this in heaven. It's going to be this right here. Every knee, your right knee and your left knee. And if, you, if your knees can see, they call it knee see. Okay? You're going to, you don't miss that. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. We all know that. So let's re represent that today. Okay. Let's, re let's read. I'm going to read this. There's going to be a lot of verses, but I want you to read it. And here's what you're going to read. David's going to say, I want to build a house for God. Then the prophet Nathan's going to say, go do what's in your heart. And then God's going to say, I got bigger plans. How many of you want God's plans for your life, not your plans for your life? Come on now. I'm going to ask that question again. Put your hands down. Elbows above the ear. Okay. How many of y'all want God's plan for your life, not your plan for your life? Very good. Put your hands down. God's plan for your life, is, I'm declaring this over your life, God's plan for your life is better than your plan for your life. Amen. Now, you ain't going to like the path because <laughs> you want the easy path. But I'm going to tell you, it's not as hard as you think. It's not as hard as you think. So let's read. Chapter 7, verse 1. I'm going to read 17 verses. This is a lot. But stick with me, okay? You need to be Bible literate, okay? I'll read it from the screen. Now it came to pass when the king, David, was dwelling in his house. Watch how many times you hear the word house. There's a physical house. There's a, 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 a family house. And there's a kingdom house. They're all interused interchangeably. It says he was dwelling in his house. And the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies. God had already blessed him. That the king, David, said to Nathan, the prophet, see now I dwell in a house of cedar, physical house, wood, but the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains. The ark was where the presence of God was. Moses built the ark in the wilderness. They carried it around the wilderness for 40 years. It was the presence of God. You need to read the Old Testament, especially the first five books. And, when, and, and it was amazing because the, there was a pillar of smoke above the ark. And when the, there was two million Jews in the wilderness walking around for 40 years, there was a pillar of smoke in the day and a pillar of fire at night. And when the pillar moved, they picked up the tent, packed up the tent, and moved the ark. And they followed it. It's awesome. And when, they, when the ark, and the ark always led, God's presence was always in front of them, never behind. Don't get, get ahead of God. Let God lead you. You get in a relationship, a business relationship, a dating relationship, or you're going to change the schools, or businesses. Say, God, what do you want me to do? Don't just do it. Don't say, God, I did it, now bless it. No, God, show me what you want me to bless. It's so much easier that way. Okay, I'm going off on a tangent, but you got it. Then Nathan said to the king, go do all that is in your what? All in your what? Very good. And the Lord is with you. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, go and tell my servant David this. Everyone say servant. You have to declare yourself a servant. God is not your servant. I am not your servant. I'm God's servant. Now, as God's servant, I will serve you as he tells me, but I'm not your servant. We all serve him. Can I get an amen? Everyone say, I am God's servant. You are, if you can just keep reminding yourself that you are God's servant, he is not your servant. He's not your good luck charm. He's not supposed to snap. He's not supposed to jump when you snap. We jump when he snaps. And then we ask permission to come down. It says, thus says the Lord, would you build a house, a house for me to dwell in? 
For I have not dwelt in a house since the time I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day. I just told you about them Egypt. But have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle, wherever I have moved about with all the children of Israel. Have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheephold, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. Guess what? Whatever you do right now, God took you from what you were doing before and put you where you are. I got here because I got a degree. Well, how did you get that degree? Well, I studied. How did you study? I used my brain. Where did you get that brain? Oh. Where did you get the money to go to school? Oh. God. And I have been with you, God says to David, I have been with you wherever you have gone and have cut off all your enemies from before you and have made you a great name like the name of the great men who were on the earth. Moreover, David, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more as previously. Since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused you to, to, to rest from all your enemies, and also the Lord tells you that he will make you, David, God says you are not going to build a house for him. He is going to build a house for you. I want God to build my house. Can I get an amen? Say, God, build my house. It says, and when your days are fulfilled, David, when your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, when you die, I will set up your seed after you. I will set up a generation and generation who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me a house for my name, Solomon his son. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever and I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him. If he sins, I will discipline him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house, everyone say house. And your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. God says, if you commit to me, I will commit to you far beyond you could ever ask or imagine. How many of you want God's blessing in your life? Amen. So here's my prayer for you, and I'm going to give you three points here. But here's my prayer for you, that you say, God, I have a heart for your house. I want to be a blessing to you. Number one in your notes. Number one. Number one. A heart for the house has a heart for God. It all starts there. If you don't have a heart for God, it's, it's a mute, 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 mute point. <laughs> Everyone say, I want a heart for God. Look what it says in, in verse 1. Look what it says in verse 1. It says, now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in the house of God, in his house, that the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies. And the king said to Nathan the prophet, See, now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside tents. And Nathan said, go do all that is in your heart. The Lord is with you. David said, I got mine. I want God to get his. How many of y'all live with a God bless me attitude versus a, a God bless you attitude? How many of you wake up every day and don't answer this question, but think about it. God bless me today versus God, I want to bless you today. The first step of having a heart for the house is to have a heart for God. The Bible says if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Let me clarify what that means and what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean if you say, God, I love you and I'm going to bless you, that you're going to get the Rolls Royce you want. It don't mean that. It means that if you say, Lord, I love you and I want to bless you and I want to be a blessing to you and I want to glorify you, I want to honor you. When people experience me, I want them to experience you. If you have that attitude, God will implant in your heart his desires and you will become more like him by committing to God to be like him. Instead of saying, Lord, Give me, give me, give me. I got mine, I got mine. No, Lord, I want to bless you. I want to be a blessing to you. I want to learn how to talk about you. I just got a, I just got a text today or, or last night about a guy. He may even be here today. 
saying, I was, I was down in the dumps, I was, I, I, I got kicked out of school, and I was lost, and I was bitter, and I was, and then someone started sharing the gospel with me and invited me to church, and this happened, and this happened, and all of a sudden, I'm on fire for God. Imagine if every single one of us said, Lord, show me who you want me to talk to. Give me a heart for what breaks your heart. Show me what, I want my life to be about you. I want your heart for my life. I want your heart for my diet. I want your heart for my friends. I want your heart for how I'm going to respond when people come at me uh, uh, wrongly. I had an incident yesterday I'm not going to get into, but I was uh, not by a police officer, but, but by someone else in authority profiled and confronted and, and, and accused of something. And, and, and I, I, I was trying not to lose my mind. <laughs> and he was like, da 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 And I was like, brother, who, who, who are you? I mean, it was just, he was coming at me, just accusing me of something. And, 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 and God said, you represent me right now. I said, no, I know I'm mad. He said, I'm going to let you get this mad, but not this mad. <laughs> There's a thing called righteous indignation. He, he, he's definitely, uh, definitely, definitely accused you of something that they had no basis of it, but you go right here. Don't go any further than here. I want to have God's heart. And my prayer for you is that you don't do religious things, but that you actually have God's heart. That you say, Lord, I delight myself in things that delight you. I want things that you want for me. And every time you pray in Jesus' name, you are actually saying, Lord, I want this, I want this, I want this in Jesus' name. You are actually saying, I want this, I want this, I want this only if you want it. But if I, you don't want it for me, I don't want it for me. How many of y'all pray for something, you got it, and then you said, man, I, 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 I wish I never got it. I wish I never got it. Can I admit? You met that person, you dated that person, you maybe married that person. You're like, man, I made a mistake. I wish I would have never met you. How many of y'all say, I wish I would have never met you? Come on now. And, and, and guess what? God warned you. I'm going to ask the ladies just for a minute. Not that it doesn't apply to ladies, uh, guys, but it applies to guys. But, but ladies, you met a guy, you saw the guy, and you had this vision about how it could be. And you created this vision, and all your girlfriends were like, mm-mm. You're crazy. He, he's whack. And no, 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 no. And you no, 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 yourself all the way to the altar or however far you went. And then you find out, man, I made a big mistake. Can I get it, man, ladies? Mm-hmm. It could have been so easy if you would have just prayed. I met a young lady, not a date situation, just, just a young lady. She just happens to be I met a young lady. She's 19. And she's, I hope she's here. I hope she hears this. And she's big time basketball player. No, she's not 19. She's like 17, 16. She's in high school. She's a big time basketball player. She's all over Instagram. All over. And, and I said, you love God? She said, yes. I said, pray for me right now. Look me in the eye. Prove it. I'm going to see where you're at. I don't just, that girl broke it down. Come on, Come on now. <laughs> She was like, blah, 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 And she was looking me dead in my eyes. She was like, da, 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 da. She wasn't doing that. This is my interpretation. I was like, okay, okay, I got you. I feel you. Hey, hey, that's simple. Lord, show me. I want what you want. Because you'll save yourself headache in all kinds of relationships. I'm not talking about dating, business relationships, uh, schools you go to, jobs you take. You'll save yourself. God, I just want, I'm going to buy this house. God, I just want what you want. And so David's like, Lord, I'm blessed. I want to make sure I bless you. I want to make sure I give you credit. Number two, number two, a heart for the house has God's heart for people. Look what the Bible says in, in, in 2 Samuel. It says, this, this is God through the prophet. I will appoint a place for my people. I, God says, I want to bless my people and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own. I want to bless my people and move no more. They, they're not going to be vagabonds moving around all over, the, all over the wilderness, nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them anymore as previously since the time that I commanded the judges to be over my people Israel and have caused them to rest from all their enemies. I want to do that for my people. And also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. God, here's what God says to, to, to David. David, not only am I going to, you're going to, I'm going to build my house. I want to bless my people. Do you know that God wants to bless all of you? Matter of fact, let's do this. Everybody raise your hand. 
Raise your hand really high. Keep your hand up. Look around the room. God, God wants to bless everybody with their hand up. Now, if you feel like, I ain't put my hand up, guess what? You missed out. (laughs) But guess how God's going to bless all these people? Through us. Through us. He's not going to show up himself and say, hey, I'm Jesus, here you go. He's going to do it through each other. And we have to be always, Lord, show me. When I'm walking through the airport, oh, I love the airport, planes. Lord, who do you want me to talk to? Who do you want me to talk to? Where do you want me to sit? I, I got my seat, but who do you want me to sit in, 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 the, in the terminal where I'm waiting? Who, who do you want me to talk to? Who do you want me to pray for? Who, who's, got a, who's got a burden? And, and he'll, bam, right there. Bam, right there. And then sometimes nobody. But I'm like, Always, because God wants to bless people. Not only the people who are already saved, but the people who are not saved. Is Ty here? Where's Ty? Ty, come on out. I, want, I, I heard this story this morning, and this is the kind of story that can happen to you if you are sensitive to the Spirit of God. But this story you're going to hear is going to, I hope it's going to blow your mind like it blew my mind. Uh, this happened yesterday and today. And this is, shows you the love of God that he has for people that may not even be thinking about him. Tell the story. This is Ty. Everyone say, what's up, Ty? Hey, what's up, family? If you believe Jesus is all-powerful, I want you guys to say amen. I'm going to have you stand right over here so the people can see you on the video. On the video. Oh, you know. <laughs> he can't stand still. Just right, 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 right over here between here and there. <laughs> He's going to get excited. If you believe Jesus is all-powerful, say amen. amen. Family, so this morning I come into to, to work and just praying that God would do something amazing. And he never, he never disappoints. So a team member comes to me, and a gentleman and his wife have been going through a difficult season. They're going through a difficult season, so much so that everything was failing before him, and he find, he's looking for his phone. He's trying to call someone for help, and his phone's not even working. He's feeling like he's by himself. He's alone. And he's just like, maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. So he goes outside, and he's sitting on his stairs, and he's just like, his tears is falling out from his eyes, and he's just like contemplating what he's going to do and how he's going to end the pain by taking his life. Pause. An Uber driver, who is a team member of ours, gets an alert on her phone, and the alert says that you have a rider that's waiting for you. She's already off. She turned her, 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 her app off, so she's, she's not even on duty, if you will, anymore. She's on her way home, and her app, her phone buzzes, and it says, you have a writer. So she's like, okay, well, I, I thought I was done, but I guess I'm not. She goes, and she's waiting. She's waiting at this address, and she's like, someone, I'm, I'm supposed to pick someone up who's here. She looks at her phone, and you can see the person's photo on there, and she looks up and sees a gentleman on his stairs. Bent over crying, and he, she says, I'm supposed to pick you up. So she rolls on the window, she says, hey, you need a ride? And he said, no. And she says, well, you called me to come get you, so I'm here to pick you up. In that moment, he's just like, what? So he goes over there, he gets in the car, he says, she says, where are we going? He said, I don't know. He begins to share with her the story of, of what he was doing and where he was at. She ministers to him, loves on him, encourages him, gives him Jesus, lets him know that God loves him, that, that God has not forgotten about him, and he has a plan for his life. He is bawling in the backseat of his car, or of her car, crying his eyes out and says, thank you so much, Jesus, for not giving up on me. Because, because this is all one, one of those moments that you're just like, how does this even happen? First of all, he never called an Uber. Second of all, she had her Uber app off. Third of all, she goes to the house and is like, what do I do? He comes out. She ministers to him, family. <laughs> this Uber driver was, was homeless. Was homeless a short while ago. And she said, God, I'm laying my life down at your feet. God, use me to do what only you can do, Jesus. So, so, so God is not only using her in here in her life. She is serving. She's been serving here. She's been pouring her heart out. She's a faithful uh, team member to our team. But also, family, she brought him. She got his number. She brought him and his wife to church today. The student right over here. What's up? What's up? We love you. God loves you. Jesus loves you. If you believe God is all powerful, I want you to stand to your feet right now and show God some love. Stand to your feet right now, family. Stand to your feet right now. Right now, say, Jesus! Yeah, yes, yes. God is good, brother. <laughs> you can say that. Jesus loves you, brother. Jesus loves you. You can be seated. Uh, uh, it, I'm going to play God for a minute. 
I'm playing golf for a minute. Please, just bear with me. I need, a, I need someone to love on them. She's off work. Hey, Angel, uh, ping her phone that she's got an Uber driver and give her the address. Put the Uber thing in his phone, too. This is God. They, neither one of them did this. Get him, get, send her over there to pray for him. She remembers what I did for her. She's going to be a blessing to me now. This is what can happen every day. If you say, God, I want, I want, God, I want, I, I want my heart for you. I, I want your heart, God, for people. And thirdly, I want your heart for the kingdom. Look at the third point. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is so much bigger. It's not, this is not the rock church thing. This is the, this is the kingdom of God thing. This is no matter where you go, glo go global thing. Everywhere that you are on call from God 24-7, that you, the Holy Spirit's in your life guiding you no matter where you go. When I talk about airports, airports all over the world, all over wherever, you know, whatever city I'm in or whatever, it's like, okay, Holy Spirit, what, what we got going on today? Show me what you got going on today. He says, oh, I'm gonna, you're going to minister to this person, you're going to minister to that person. Look what it says. A heart for the house has a heart for God's kingdom. Say God's kingdom. God's kingdom. This is way bigger than us. It's way bigger than your house, your job, your bank account. The Rock Church is way bigger than San Diego. But it has to start with you having a heart for God, having a heart for God's people, and having a heart for the kingdom. Look what it says. Look what the Bible says. It says, this is what he says to David. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed. David, after you're dead, I'm transcendent. I got something way bigger than you. When you are dead, I will say, when you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed, your son, after you, and, and who will come from your body, yours, your own son, and I will establish his kingdom. This is King Solomon. And he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Everyone say forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Why? Because it's family. His family. I'm going to be his dad and he's going to be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chase him, which, which, which God did, and, and with the rod of men and with the, rod of, uh, with the blows of the sons of men. I will discipline him, but my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house, say your house. Hey, we always talk about when Jesus was born, he was from the house of David. When Jesus was born, he was from the house of David the lineage of the descendants of David. He says, your house, your name, and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. Say forever. I, I was, I was uh, in Miami uh, three weeks ago. I was talking to Pastor Travis, and he said, hey, do you know that China has a, has a hundred-year plan to take over the world? A hundred. They don't change presidents every four years like we do. A hundred I was like, oh, snap, The Rock needs to have a 100-year plan. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh. D check this out. Two days later, I'm in a board meeting, and I said, hey, board, we need to have a 100-year plan. And one of the board members said, I just came from Hobby Lobby with the family, and there was a guy there talking about uh, families and companies having one and 200-year plans and how to do it. I said, give me that guy's number. I called that guy up. He said, yes, I can come to your church and help your families establish a 100-year plan for their family. How many of y'all would want that? How many of y'all would want that, by the way? A amen. And I'm, I'm tripping. And here's the point. This is so much bigger than us. And what you do here, how you invest your life here, how you invest your, life, your money here, your prayers here, and, and, and the divine appointments that God puts in your life to talk to people is going to outlive you. I am standing here today because two hippies who I have no idea where they are, don't remember the name, I saw them twice in my life, came up to me, random cold call in a department store to a 19-year-old black kid with a big afro, I looked like a blow pop, had a big old afro with a skinny body, and they said, hey man, you want to read the Bible? Is Jesus born again? And I was like, yeah, okay. I was, you know, getting ready to get high because those dudes did that. Something way beyond what they could ask or imagine was put in me. That's you. That's you. And so, so my, when I say heart for the house, I'm going to read Acts chapter 13, verse 22, and then we're going to pray. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. This is, this is what the Bible says about David. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. You want to be a person after God's heart? Just do what he says. I'm going to tell you the most profound thing you could ever learn from the Bible. 
in my opinion, the most profound thing, and you want to be a deep thinker and all that stuff, it don't mean nothing if you don't get this. Do what God says. You can learn about theology. You can learn about eschatology. You can learn about pneumatology. You can learn about Christology and all these different ologies about and disciplines in the Bible. Fabulous. Learn it. But if you don't do what God says, what good is it? The Bible says if you can speak in tongues and you can prophesy, but you have not love, you're just a clanging symbol. And love is not a feeling. It's a commitment to obey God. 1 John 5, 3 says to love God means to obey God. That's what it is. Whether you feel like it or not, that's why the Bible says the just shall walk by faith, not by sight. Faith means I don't feel like obeying, but I'm going to do it anyway. God said about David, he wasn't perfect. He, had a lot, he did a lot of bad things. But in general, he was a guy who was desiring to do what I wanted. I want to pray for all the campuses and that all of y'all would make a decision. I want to be that, that guy, that girl. I want to do what God wants. I want to do what God wants. And as we go through this series, I'm going to be sharing with you some things that we're going to do. We want to remodel the chapel. We want to do renovation on buildings and the money that's going to cost. That you would say, God, I want to be involved in reaching the community, serve and open up doors for opportunity for us to reach uh, um, the people in the community. I was talking to the GM of the Fox station about doing a media event for all the people in the media in San Diego, just to bless them, all the things that we can do, but it's going to require people. It's going to require open doors of opportunity. It's going to require relationships that have a heart for what we're trying to do here. Say, Lord, I'm in. Whatever you want me to do, not what the pastor asked me to do, but what you tell me to do. That's what I want. So I'm going to ask all y'all to bow your heads and close your eyes and listen very carefully. Lord, I think as a pastor, the only thing, the probably the most important thing I can ask for is a church that has a heart for the house. People that come, wake up every day saying, Lord, what do you want me to do today? How do you want me to serve you? Who do you want me to pray for? Who do you want me to encourage? Where do you want me to serve? What do you want me to give? Where do you want me to sit? What do you want me to read? Just, what do you want me to do, God? I have a heart for you. I have a heart for your people, and I want to build your kingdom. And if today as you're sitting in whatever campus you're in, you're saying, yes, I want to have a heart for the house, and I want to start by having God's heart. I want to be a person after God's heart. Because if I have God's heart, everything else is going to follow and fall into place. So if that's you, I just want you to pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart. Then I'm just going to ask you to stand. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. I'm just going to ask you to stand. But I want you to prepare yourself now. So in the privacy of your heart, if that's you, just pray, dear God, I want your heart. Give me a desire to be a blessing to you. Give me a desire to be a blessing to your people. Give me a desire to build your kingdom. Give me a heart for your house, for your family, your church, my church. I want to move past attending. And I want to move into contributing. As the eyes are closed and the heads are bowed, in a minute I'm just going to ask you to stand. I'm not going to ask you to come forward because I hope that it's more people than can fit at the stage. But if you prayed that prayer and you're saying, I want to have a heart for the house. I want to have God's heart for the house. And you prayed that prayer, just stand to your feet on, on the count of three. One, two, three. Just stand to your feet. You prayed that prayer. God bless you. 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 Stay standing. Just stay standing. Lord, I pray 
blessing over all the people who are standing in all the campuses. I pray that you give them a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, a hunger and a thirst for holiness, a desire to read their Bible, a desire to pray, a desire to serve, that you would wake them up to the gifts that you have given them and the opportunities that you have surrounded them in. And Lord, I pray for the people who are sitting, that you would stir their heart and challenge them to make decision one way or the other. You don't want us to be lukewarm. You want us to be cold or hot, for you or against you. There is no neutral. So I pray that you challenge them to decide where they will be. But give them the wisdom to see the blessing of having a heart for the house, a heart for God. I pray you bless them as well. As you say, you draw us close to you by your mercy and your grace. So I thank you, praise you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give everybody a big hand. God bless y'all. Hey, family, if you made a decision for Jesus today, we'd love to follow up with you, connect with you, and give you some next steps. You can text the word SAVED to 52525, or you can visit sdrock.com slash SAVED. We'd love to make sure we can connect with you. Again, uh, we're starting the series called Heart for the House, and as I was thinking about the series and kind of the heart of generosity, I thought about how the world views homes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's part of the American dream uh, to oh, yeah. be a homeowner. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. if you're not an American, you know, being a homeowner, <laughs> it provides that level of security. Yeah. And if you have Netflix or Hulu or any streaming service, Come you on cannot now. escape <laughs> the home shows. Can, mean, we Can we shout out the network? Can we shout out the network? It's HGTV. Oh, you know. <laughs> you yep. Fixer Instant Upper. Dream home. <laughs> <laughs> Fixer Upper. I mean, there's an obsession with valuing homes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of that probably comes with the idea of security. If I have my home, yeah. I have my abode, I'm safe, mm -hmm. there's value yeah. there, there's equity there. Yeah. But I wonder as believers, do we value God's home? Mm. You know, is that a secondary thing where it's like, yeah, it's me, it's my four no more, like I got my space. <laughs> um, what, mm. you know, what do you guys think about kind of our world's obsession with homes? Yeah. Well, first, I relate to that, bro, because my wife and I, we love HGTV. <laughs> we right. got, like, our shows. We stream it. Sometimes we binge it. We're like, man, oh, I'd love to do this. I'd love to do that. Do you try it? Yeah. The home projects? Oh, um, yeah, but, <laughs> I mean, time is money, and we can definitely probably save money by letting someone else do it. <laughs> right. And true. quality also as well. Yeah. Shout We're out to right all the contractors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, I think for us, and just, yeah, you know, there is such a value and, and it's like a cultural thing too of like investing in the home. Like we think of it as like the safe space when we come home from work, mm -hmm. come home from school. Um, and there's power in investing in your home. I think in a way, um, because I think there's a few things. I think that um, it creates a safe space for things like community. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. creates a safe space for, for growth and relationship. Um, you get to like, you raise your kids, you see generations yeah. be raised in it. Yeah. And I think in, in similar situations, you, you, we're talking about like the, the, the heart for the house and generosity. It's like when people are generous, some of those same things happen within the context of the church walls, yeah. right? Generations are raised up, people are discipled, relationships are built. Um, you, ca you guys could probably think of, you know, the ways that the church has formulated some of those things, relationships. And just, uh, we talked uh, maybe a few weeks ago about just how like, personal growth as a leader and as a mm -hmm. pastor has happened within these walls. And so um, I think there has to be some sort of emphasis that, yeah, like um, emphasizing the giving and of time, resources into the church building is, is so vital mm -hmm. because yeah. it changes lives. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of think of, well, first of all, as you were talking about the this safety and security of it. So before I worked here at the church, I used to work for a a mental health company that mm. uh, worked for the county. And, you know, we would serve some of the most um, severely mentally ill. And what we found was, a, and, you know, a lot of these folks will tend to be on the streets mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just work, you know, they don't have funding to, to provide for those kind of things. And what we realized is they're so unsafe in their mind, mm. right, that they can't focus on the healing of mm. their mental illness because they feel like they, they, they don't have a safe place, yeah. a sanctuary, right. right, to feel comfortable and secure. Mm -hmm. And so 
we had to add a branch that actually looked for housing because wow. they needed to get these basic needs met first right. before we could even address their mental illness. Yeah. Um, so I just think about that and, and the, the importance of a sanctuary for ourselves, right? To be able to decompress and feel like we can be refilled, especially as believers, as people that are constantly intentionally trying to pour out to others. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's where a lot of that value comes in, but we forget that the sanctuary of the heart, the, the God, God's home, mm -hmm. right, is our place to come together mm -hmm. in unity and be used in a communal way, yeah. right? Um, Preach, and, good. and be poured into mm -hmm. in that space as yeah. well, yeah. right? So That's good. yeah, there's kind of, I think both are valuable. We forget to put a little more, maybe here in Western culture, in, yeah. in the community aspect of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I want to speak directly to our Church Anywhere family. Many of you are watching this in your home and it's just, just as Becky was talking about, creating a safe space and a sanctuary for others to come and encounter the presence of God. You, know, you don't have to be in the four walls of a church to have that environment happen. It really happens with a humble heart that values God's presence in God's house. And so I wanna encourage you, if that's, if that's you and you're watching at home and you're saying, man, I'd love to create a space where other people can come, people who may never step foot in a church, but they know you and they feel comfortable in your home, you can do that by uh, visiting scrock.com slash church anywhere and hosting your own site. Uh, we'd love to connect with you. If you have any questions, you can email our team at church anywhere at scrock.com. To stay up to date to everything that we're doing here, you can follow our social media platforms at The Rock San Diego. And we'll see you next week. God bless you, family.